Welcome back to Dr. Sellers Educate. We're thrilled that you're back. And if you haven't subscribed to this channel, go ahead and do that now, as well as click on the bell so you can be alerted every single time a new episode is released. We continue to hear feedback from nurse educators that they are struggling as it relates to item analysis. We tend to hear that curriculum development, item or exam analysis, as well as facilitation of learning are those three large gap areas that many nurse educators experience. Either they have identified that as part of their review in the self-assessment exam that NLN does offer, or it may have been just increased awareness as you're going through the detailed exam blueprint. If you identify these large gap areas for yourself, remember that there are resources here on our YouTube channel. We have now um, more than three dozen episodes that are gonna provide you with rich content that's aligned with what the literature says, primarily Billings and Halstead teaching and nursing, um, as well as Dr. Caputi's review book. Okay, so we use the same resources that NLN is recommending, and that's really important to us to make sure that we are providing you with accurate content that's gonna help you on your journey. That is the mission of us here at Dr. Sellers Educate, is to support every single nurse educator on their journey to achieve certification. So let's go ahead and first of all, take a look at the NLM website. It's been refreshed. So I want to familiarize you all a little bit with how to find the information that you need. When you go to the home page at the very top, you're going to see the tab NLN certification. That's where you want to start. And then you will choose your certification exam on the left. And then this is where you're going to find all of the great resources as well as the candidate handbook that will help you on your journey to clarify any questions that you have. You can always reach out to the NLN organization. They have an email here on the website, as well as a phone number that you can reach out to if you have questions. Now we're gonna take a look at the content for item analysis to help close those gaps and support you as you continue on your journey. Exam analysis can be very complex to understand. We want to simplify that for you, and we've developed what we call a five-step process associated with exam analysis. If you have not had a chance to take advantage of the free resource that's available on our website, that is the item analysis learning guide, we encourage you to do that right now. Okay, so go over to our website, drsellerseducate.com, and you'll see that complimentary resource that's available to you. First, we're going to get started looking at item analysis. This is a sample of a question on an exam. You can see here there are specific psychometric components that have been evaluated using software. When we are conducting an exam analysis and an item analysis, we should be using software to give us data that will help us make decisions about whether or not an exam was a valid and reliable exam. We can see here the statistical data include the p-value as well as the point by CO index. If you're feeling like this right now, you're not alone, okay? So just stay with us. There are a couple of resources we have available to you. Um, one resource is gonna be that item analysis learning guide that we talked about earlier. The second resource is gonna be our boot camp. We have established a community with nurse educators just like you to support you on your journey. Again, that's our mission here at Dr. Sellers Educate is to help every nurse educator achieve success and to support you on your journey to achieve certification as a nurse educator. We've broken it down to simplify it a little bit for you in a five-step process. First step is the test blueprint. This is a very important step in the process. What is it? What is the purpose? It's going to identify whether or not we've met our objectives, right, in determining if students have learned the information. So step one in our blueprint is to, to define the specific SLOs or student learning outcomes that we want to measure. We're going to use Bloom's taxonomy as our guide for developing and leveling those specific learning objectives. This is going to serve as our guide to help link the level of student learning outcomes to the level of the test question. And then we have step two. That's going to include us determining the instructional content that we want to include in our course. It should be evaluated and we're going to weigh that based on, again, the overall expectations that we have with student learning and those different evaluation activities that we are going to incorporate as part of our course. Step two. Test development, how much time per question is going to depend on the complexity of the question. 
We know that writing test questions is a science and it takes a lot of skill, um, but it's also an art. There are wonderful faculty that enjoy writing test questions and we really appreciate them, right? Um, but you wanna be considerate of that as you are writing your test questions. We know that we're getting students ready for next gen and we should be writing exams and developing exams that are aligned with some of those standards. Select all that apply, for example, the drag and drop technology that we know is coming with that next gen. One to one and a half minutes tends to be the standard. For the NLN exam, what you wanna understand, again, is these concepts and the best practices associated with how do you write uh, an exam and how do you evaluate whether or not it was indeed a valid and reliable exam? Step three is reviewing that statistical data for the test overall. OK, that's called an exam analysis. There are different data points and information that an exam analysis is going to give you. You want to ensure that you are looking at that report, the exam report, as part of the psychometric testing that your technology is going to provide for you. All right, quiz time. So we're looking at the stability of a test analysis data, okay? This increases as number of test takers gets closer to 100. When conducting a review of student exam scores, the faculty determined that only 30 students of the total 45 completed the exam. Based on this information, the best next step would be, again, thinking about breaking down this question into three parts. The first part is a statement, it's the STEM. The stability of test analysis data will increase as number of test takers gets closer to 100. Okay, so that's a statement or a fact. The scenario is next, and this is describing for you here that you are conducting a review of student exam scores. Only 30 have completed out of the 45 expected. And then there's the question, right? So based on this information, just think about this is the information you have to answer this question, you're going to identify the next best step. If you chose B, you are correct. You want to, net the best next step is to check the number of items and test takers to verify accuracy. Now, as great as technology is, we all know it's great when it works, but when it doesn't work, it can be very challenging. So you wanna, again, verify the accuracy of that scoring report. Let's go back and talk about the why behind the other choices. Complete analysis to determine which items to nullify. Remember, nullifying is not a best practice, even though that may be a practice you have at your university that is not encouraged and is not supported by literature. C, to analyze exam after at least 40 students have taken the exam. Well, maybe, but we're not sure if that's the best next step based on the choices that we have. We want to analyze the exam as soon as possible, right, after the exam is completed. The fact that 15 students didn't take the exam is concerning. Um, and there's really no indication that 40 would, would really help us in our analysis, even though we want to get closer, as we said, to 100 um, what we want is all 45 students to have taken the exam. So that's probably not the best answer out of the three so far, right? Next, evaluate the mode to determine the standard deviation. Well, that's an important step, but again, it's not the best next step, okay? That would indeed be um, selection B uh, that is the correct answer. All right, step four, review the statistical data for each item that goes back to the very beginning when we looked at the specific example one question on the exam analysis report and then the final step we want to consider necessary revisions that's going to be based on that point by zero index right that's going to be one of the parameters that really is going to tell the story for us about whether or not it was a question that validated learning since we know point by serial index helps us discriminate between low performers and high performers, and specifically whether or not they answered that question correctly. All right, so there it is. That's the five-step process. We hope that was helpful as you continue on your journey. Our goal is to simplify content. We go much deeper in detail related to item analysis and exam analysis during our boot camp. Until next time, this is how you can reach us, and we hope this has been helpful. Continue on your journey and stay focused. Until next time.